Hi there, Richard Pavlidis here. Thanks for tuning in again. And in today's lesson, we're going to talk about how we can move beyond the shapes and create our own jazz language. So over the last few weeks, we've gone over a lot of melodic shapes and we've looked at how we can fit them together to construct longer lines, particularly lines that fit over a 2-5-1, which is the most common jazz chord progression. But in my experience, there's a lot of jazz education out there that shows you the shapes and the building blocks, and then there's a lot of jazz education that shows you the finished product, but there's not a lot of information on how to actually bridge that gap. So that's what I'm going to try and look at today. So what we're going to do is take an extremely simple phrase, and we're going to embellish it using the techniques that we've learned until we can turn it into a longer bebop style line and hopefully you'll really be able to follow the progression of that line and how it came to be. So I'm going to start off with the simplest possible phrase we could ever have. That's just one note. Okay, now what can we do to develop that one note? We can add another one. Pretty simple so far. What can we do to develop this idea? Let's circle it. So we had one note above, now we can have one note below. So this is known as note circling, or it's also known as an enclosure. Now how can we develop this even further? What are the sort of things that jazz musicians might do to make this more jazzy? We can add some chromaticism. So now we have a chromatic note, a note that's not from within the chord. Now we can continue this pattern but we can start from further away from the target note and take longer to get there. And of course, once we hit the target note, that doesn't mean we have to stop. We can also extend that. There are a few different kind of template endings that we can use. Now we can start including even more chromaticism. So this line is the same as the previous line but with a few extra chromatic notes getting from the second last note to the last note. And now we're extending this circling idea even further. So we're circling our first target note and then we're circling our second target note. Now we're doing that again, but embellishing the end. And now we're just adding a bunch of different endings. And now we put all this together and we can come up with a longer Charlie Parker style line. Now speaking of Charlie Parker style lines, you would have noticed in last week's lesson that when I was analysing the phrases I was playing, I left a few sort of to be continued. At one point I said Charlie Parker line to be studied in a further lesson. This is that further lesson. So we're going to take that line and I'm going to show you exactly where it comes from and why it makes sense. So first we just have a descending scale. It's a C major scale that goes all the way from high C down to low E. So high C is our start note, low E is our target note. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Second step is I'm altering those last few notes. So I'm going up in an arpeggio and targeting the G instead of going all the way down and targeting the E. But I'm still keeping it all diatonic. One, two, three, four. Now, I'm treating each note in the, in the descending scale as a target note, and I'm circling each one. One, two, three, four. Now, I'm adding a little anacrusis, or pickup line, at the start of the phrase. One, two. And here's what it sounds like in context. 
Now another thing I did in last week's lesson was show you a John Coltrane line that's applicable over two five ones. Now this one uses an augmented arpeggio over the five chord. So I'll show you exactly how that works now. And the third line that I need to explain is a line I transcribed from a Sonny Stitt solo and um, this one uses an augmented arpeggio as well but it uses it in a different permutation. I'll demonstrate how this one works now. Now one way you can practice these circling or enclosure ideas is to take some of the melodic shapes that we've been working on and add chromaticism to them. So we started off playing our scales up and down, then we added diatonic patterns, then we added more complex melodic shapes, and now we're adding chromaticism to those complex shapes. So we end up with a lot of vocabulary just based on just one major scale, and that's essentially a large part of jazz improvisation. <laughs> So download the PDF because this is all there in all 12 keys. Um, as usual, feel free to email me if you have any questions, if anything doesn't make sense, or if you've got suggestions for anything you'd like to see in a future lesson. Happy practicing and I'll see you next week. Cheers.